Alberta Premier Jason Kenney faced the media for the first time since Wednesday's shocking announcement. He is stepping down as leader of the United Conservative Party, but not right away. Kenney will stay on as leader and as Premier until the party chooses his successor. As you know, I indicated my intention to step aside as United Conservative Party leader. I'll be doing so as soon as the party is elected a new leader. That date will be up to the leadership election organizing committee. Uh, and I was pleased that, that yesterday government caucus met uh, and affirmed its support for this approach, allowing the government to maintain the continuity of stability and to continue to focus on the people's priorities. Leela here is an Alberta Con United Conservative Party MLA. She's been an outspoken critic of Jason Kenney. Well, Leela here, you got your wish on Wednesday, Jason Kenney announcing that he was going to leave, but today Jason Kenney is staying on until a new leader is picked. Are you happy with that development? Um, I, uh, to the leadership review, or sorry, the leadership race has been a huge goal for, for many of us. There's a lot of reasons for that. We, we need to be able to get in front of the beautiful people of Alberta and earn back their trust and work really hard to, you know, formulate what we want for our party. As you know, we're a very new movement, really, relatively speaking, for conservative parties. And so the opportunity to be able to do that and have a leadership race, and, and it's just one of the most important things I think that we can do right now to to bring folks back together. And um, the the you know Jason's the acting premier right now it's a a figurehead but you know he's he you know I imagine he's probably entitled to run in the leadership uh, race if he wants to but he'd have to obviously step down and that would have to have to happen sooner rather than later um but in the meantime you know we go back into the house th this week and we do the people's business which is what we're hired to do and more importantly um that his resignation triggered this leadership race and now that has to happen so it's in the hands of the party and my expectation is is that the party needs to get that started as soon as possible right, right. but can you explain to me how this happened after months of turmoil and a 51.4 percent victory, uh, for lack of a better term, in the leadership review. How did he walk into that caucus room and convince you to let him stay on? Well, um, there, I will not break, obviously, the caucus confidentiality, what happens in that room. Um, our meeting yesterday was actually really full of team building. It was very nice to be with everybody and to talk about the future. And there was a lot of actual hope in that room because the leadership race was triggered. And the outcome of the premier sitting in as the interim leader, as you saw with the, um, the what was given out as uh, as notice for um, at Nathan Newdorf, our caucus chair, released a statement. Mm -hmm. There was a majority of people who suggested that he should stay on as the interim leader. And there is an important part of that majority making that decision. So the most important thing, probably the most valuable piece that comes out of that is that then the premier cannot um, do any sort of, there, there, there can't be any shenanigans when it comes to the leadership race because he has to remove himself from that or from the uh, nominations that are up and coming or any of the AGMs that still need to be held. There's just so much work to do. Okay, so if he wants to stay on as premier, he can't run in the leadership. If he wants to run in the leadership, he has to step down as premier. And you say a majority of the yes. caucus were content to have him stay on. Is this a bigger majority than he got in the leadership? Was it more than 51%? Was it a sizable majority of caucus? Or can you give us any insight into that? I, I wouldn't be able to share that with you because that would be taking away from the confidentiality that I hold very dear to the caucus. Okay, but we have this weird situation, right, where the argument was Jason Kenney needs to go for the good of Alberta and for the good of the party. And now the argument mm -hmm. is Jason Kenney needs to stay for the good of the government and the continuity of the agenda. So, I mean, how do you square that with the yeah. Alberta people? Well, the membership is the membership is spoken, and regardless of what the language is around where Jason Kenney sits right now, it is a figurehead. He is a he is holding that position simply until a new leader is chosen, and that leader needs to be chosen right away. I think the bigger discussion isn't about who is holding that interim position right now. The bigger discussion is about how fast we can get to this leadership race, and if that is dragged out in any way, or if there's any nonsense that goes on in not allowing this leadership race to proceed, there will be great questions around exactly what you're asking oh, about oh, right now. Okay. But at this point in time... Oh, go ahead, finish your thought. 
No, 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 go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, you've used the word figurehead a couple of times now, right? And, and you've mm -hmm. warned against shenanigans in the leadership. So are, are you saying mm -hmm. that Jason Kenney is essentially a premier in name only and not a premier with any real power? Because, I mean, constitutionally, there's no such thing as an interim premier. You're the premier or you're not. But are you saying he's a premier with a pretty strong leash that the caucus is ready to tug if it needs to? Well, he said that himself, mm -hmm. right? He's the acting premier. He said that... He was simply, his entire desire was to help just to stabilize in order to be able, like this is what he has said, right? In order to be able to help move forward into this next juncture, he has resigned. You can't unresign. So whatever this position is that we're in right now, um, the most beautiful part about this is that we're in a leadership race. That's mm -hmm. truly all I was asking for. Um, I assumed that, I mean, that there would have been a, a race for interim as well, too. However, um, the premier had to give his notice in order to um, be able to, st uh, to resign. He resigned uh, the night before saying the words that he will resign when a new leader is chosen. So based on that information... And the desire of what came forward with the majority of caucus, um, that's why he's sitting there. And yes, he is a figurehead. Yes, okay. he must stay out of the leadership rates. Yes, there are things that he needs to finish. He'll obviously be meeting with his cabinet and all those sorts of things. But again, the, I, the truth and the honesty, like if you saw his speech, it was very humble. It was extremely, I thought, a very selfless speech and well done. And I was really, really, um, that was the right thing to do. And I respect that. However, that respect needs to be held. The membership made a decision. And if that is not, and also Albertans are making very, very strong commentary as well, too. So just keep in mind that whatever the decisions that are made within caucus, we have to respect what the members want. So whatever this is right now, the only outcome that is okay is that we head into a leadership race as fast as possible. So you that say, does not happen. Right. You say Jason Kenney has to stay out of the leadership race, you know, but who do you Absolutely. want to see get into the leadership race? Will you run for this? Who would you support? Who do you want to see replace Jason Kenney? Um, I actually, the leadership race will bring a lot of people to the forefront. Our job, it's been so leader centric, right? That's been the problem. So we have to focus on the party and bring in the party back together. And if we can focus on that, like I want, I want a party that cares about human centric, thoughtful, common sense, and very solution oriented, you know, local solutions. There are there, this person has to be able to be relatable and right. that people in the province can see themselves in that person. That's going to come and evolve from the race. And that's what needs to happen. Like You can imagine how important it is for all of us, um, whether we're running or not, to be able to go and build our membership back up again, right? So, and the other thing that you have to keep in mind is the person who replaces the premier at this point has to have some runway to be able to run in the next election. Anything that is done to stop that process is going to handcuff the person that is chosen by the people to run for the UCP in the next in the next election. I, I have one last quick question before before we let you go. Yes, is, is like from my perch here in Ottawa, this has looked like a total political mess from very far away. And I will confess, I lived in Alberta many many years mm -hmm. ago, but it's been a long time. Yeah. How does this process put you in a better position to beat beat Rachel Notley and the NDP in the next election? Because it seems like you've damaged the party's brand, not you personally, but collectively, no, I understand. quite immensely with this. How are you better off now? We are better off because we can earn people's respect back and their trust. This is our responsibility to be able to do the people's work and to have um, a leader in there that really can resonate with people and that there's a trust, right? When you lose trust in your institutions and particularly in politics, for somebody like me, um, I'm a real grassroots kind of girl. And that sort of engagement and the ability to be able to trust the people who are running those institutions is one of the most important things that I, I, I feel really privileged, you know, to be a part of that. Um, being able to earn that trust back would mean more to me personally than I can probably express to you. And I want that chance for, for us as a team. We're a new party. We need an opportunity to really solidify and bring forward what it is, what our vision is for the province, right? Okay. All right, Leela here. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. Thank you for having me. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.